Now, how was that vibe with Nipsey being in there like that? It was cool. He had like a big room in the back. He would do his thing. And then I had a smaller room in the front. I would do my thing. And then, you know, you could just hear music in the hallways. People would step out once they finish a verse or something. Another beat start from scratch. And it was just like, it was just a well-oiled machine around that time. And just you know, trading off those ideas mm -hmm. and shit like that. Like... When I did Status Symbol 3, I recorded that song for myself. And I left the verses open. Cause I'm like, damn, it sound tight like this. And I went home. It was like a long day. And then they called me the next day, like, you made the album good, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what are you talking about? Nigga, this just took your song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it took that shit. He was Nigga, like, it's me. Every song we make, I'm gonna call it status symbol, cause this represents, you know, we a status. I'm like, <laughs> go ahead, homie. <laughs> So the nigga gave you a whole little lecture about how you gonna take your motherfucking yeah, song. Yeah, I made the album. That's yeah. what it was. It was cool though. We shot a video. He had me and uh, Ray all in downtown. We shut down downtown. We was over there by LA Live, did it up. He always showed mad love and respect. It was really tight. Man, that fucking song is hard too. And I was wondering like, how the fuck did Buddy get in here with Nipsey? Like, this I was shit just is funny, in there you know with him. Me? Like, this, this shit is crazy. I just made that song. They played it for him, and he liked it that much. He just wanted to rap on it and make it a single and put a whole campaign behind it. I'm like, cool, turn me up. So all he did was add his verses? Yeah. Nigga, that song is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel it? Did you feel it when you made it? You was like, yeah, I wanted it. I was nigga, like, nigga, this damn. is finna go. Oh, God. I had to really step back because I'm like, damn, I got to kill these rap verses. Like, let me just take a step back because this is a really good hook. Yeah. You know? I remember I wrote that shit in the shower and, like, I literally almost forgot what I was doing. I had the melody and the words already, but when I came to the stew, they just had the beat, you know? It was yeah. like the perfect canvas to put some paint where it ain't, and then we just made it happen. Oh, so you already had it like locked in, but you didn't have that the actual beat. Yeah, the beat to it. No, that's cold. Yeah, no. I knew what I wanted to say. Like, almost forgot what I was doing. I be doing that all the time. Like earlier, mm -hmm. I was like, damn, we doing the interview right now. I'm like, hey. nah, but this is cool though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, that's some homie shit. We chilling. Like, yeah. it ain't, it's a, you know. But it be happening. You ever like yeah. forgot what you was doing, like in the middle of it? I'm old as fuck, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole sentiment. It was just like, yeah. Just reminding myself, like, oh, wow, it's a higher purpose going on right now. You know? Yeah. I almost forgot what I was doing. Yeah. So, like, we listening to the song, you know, we driving Laurel Canyon, boom, boom, boom. And I tell my girl, I'm like, you remember cuz who was skating? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's cuz. She was like, hell no. Yeah. And I was like, that's him, homie. Oh, yeah, that's me, for real. Oh, uh, that's tight, man. I, you know, I always want, you know, I wanted to ask, you know, you know, about those Nipsey stories. You know, I, you know, I came in contact with him a few times. We came, we crossed paths a few times. I fuck, I fuck with him. That's my nigga. He followed me right before, you know, like probably like a couple months before, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That shit happened to him. Like, so, you know, everybody I come across always got those stories. Like, you know, he was just super intelligent, intellectual nigga that's just going to drop those gems and give you that, you know what I'm saying? He had like a, a book list a documentary list like some days we go to the studio and we just learning shit we sitting there watching the doc i would like try to pay attention my attention span was very short <laughs> i would go make a song come back they still watching this documentary on something that they interested in uh -huh. and then they would take like breaks i remember one time we just randomly took a trip to vegas he was like let's go to vegas I'm like, I'm trying to go, what the fuck? You know, I'd be sleeping in the stew anyway at this time. I'm like, what's one night in Vegas, fuck it. I just hopped in the car. Yeah. Had like one change of clothes. We stopped at like one of those little um, spots that had a roller coaster. Niggas was not trying to get on a roller coaster. I was the only <laughs> It's young like a little hotel on the Oh side, my right? God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, y'all ain't trying to get on. Y'all stopped at that? Yeah. Y'all niggas called for that. They said they was going to get on a roller coaster, but they was spooked when we got there. They was not trying to get on that <laughs> shit. Him, BH, none of them was trying to ride the roller coaster. And on the way back, when mm -hmm. we left Vegas to come back, these niggas had a lean fight in the car. When I tell you these grown ass men was just like pouring lean on each other as a joke, like it started off like as like subtle disrespect. You know, I think it was like maybe like a soda or some water, like, shut up nigga. You know what I mean? The dude was like, nigga. <laughs> and then they didn't have nothing else to throw, so they just double cut. I'm in the back back like, niggas had to stop at a gas station all sticky, washed off. It was really crazy, but I'll never forget that shit. That shit was tight. That's crazy. Did you ever get on lean? No, I said lean, but I didn't get on it. 
Like, you wasn't addicted? Nah, yeah, I just fell asleep and woke up. Yeah, I taste that shit the other day. That shit was crazy. I'm like, nigga, this shit. What you like, oh, you a crackhead now. I tasted a little bit. I was like, oh, this shit is crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is what y'all sipping? I thought it was nasty. No, it tastes good. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh. It's very sweet with the soda. That's how you get it. Especially when you get the blend right. Like, they do. It's science. Yeah. Okay, yeah. they got the sodas with the hoes. Yeah. No, you don't can't get this soda from the store. Oh uh, God! Just, but it was just funny, man, to experience. That shit was very, very tight. Really good memory. Shit, now nowadays, you know, like where you get your motivation from, man. You know, coming here and do the music and fucking with it. Cause I see you in here by yourself, man. You feel me? Like really? I fuck know. with the homies for real. Like you know, even though he ain't here, Mars allows me this space. He makes the beats and just you know, it's just freedom. You know, I don't really gotta like do too much to get my shit off you know walk in listen to some beats load it up and then rap like that's all the nigga ever really want to do and he's always providing me with that space so i just be fucking with the homies for real that's crazy like he he come he, he already had a beats already loaded up for you it's a playlist of beats they, they he makes beats every day you know on the west you feel me where do you feel like you fit in because you know i don't fit in i stand out yeah, because it's crazy. You really do stand out. Yeah, I don't want to fit in. I never wanted to fit in. I'm like yeah. all the way over here, but I'm just from over here, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to do anything anybody else is trying to do. I'm trying to create my own sound and lane. I don't feel like I've ever had like a tight beat or like a core sound. People don't know what to expect from me ever. They just accept it fully. I can do some hood shit. I can do some eclectic shit. You know what I mean? I could do some international shit. And it's cool, because it's me. This your, So you don't have, like, your fan base is not asking you, like, what, you know, they're not telling you, like, look, we want this specific thing from you, bro. Um, I don't pay enough attention to what people I don't know tell me or say. Like, my fan base, like, I don't know them personally, so I don't really read comments or DMs about suggestions. I just go with what I feel, for real. Do you think sometimes you should or, like, you think sometimes it, it might hurt you just to listen just a little bit to, you know what I'm saying, your fans? Maybe. Yeah. S somebody recently told me I'm very headstrong. I had to Google it, and it just means, like, I know what I want, and I'll be doing that. An artist, an artist once told me I start. I was doing what I want, you feel me? I did what I want, you know, I'm an artist. This is what I do. I love music, but I, I didn't make it to this level until I started giving the people what they wanted. I feel that. And I can resonate with that deeply. Yeah. But um, I have to work towards that. <laughs> you feel like because you ain't got there yet or what? I just don't know what the people want. It's hard to put a finger on what the people want. It's so oversaturated, you know, so many niche genres of wants. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, what do I want for real? Or what do I want my fan base to listen to? Or, you know, what do I want to give them? You know, because it's just really just feeding fan base you know and I'm so blessed to have one what I realized is these major labels and all these businesses that put up money they really buy audiences so me coming into the game Pharrell's protege you know Nipsey's little homie MVP of the Dreamville shit it's like all these different audiences that my name is attached to that's like holds value you know because people go and go to the show buy the tickets buy some merch and support you know what I'm saying but all these different audiences from bigger names than mine appreciate my contribution to where, like, you know, runneth over into my core fan base. You know what I mean? So it's just, like, far and few between, and it's just a lot of things that I have access to touch.